We've been talking, Ken, a lot about the political landscape and bringing in leaders to address some of the priorities that you have, like education and the deficit. I think a lot of people are wondering if you're still backing Ron DeSantis. You did publicly, but haven't spoken about it in a while. Well, I think if we go back, though, to, to what's important to me, education. I think education is important to almost every family in America. Ron DeSantis, on the topic of education, has done a great job in Florida. There's a footfall in the last few months that I don't really care for, but overall, he's done a really good job of expanding access to charter schools in Florida, and I'm making it very clear in Florida, we're gonna focus on phonics and reading and mathematics, and we're gonna keep ourselves outside of the culture wars that have consumed way too much airtime, in my opinion, in way too many classrooms across the United States. So you backed him on the, the Don't Say Gay bill in Florida. Well, so the, the first version of Don't Say Gay, which was to keep the dialogue around sex out of the classroom for kindergarten through third grade, I think he got that right. And in fact, one of my closest friends is one of the largest supporters of gay rights in the United States. And I, I specifically asked him about this legislation. I was very curious, what would he say about this given his lifetime commitment to fighting for gay rights? And he felt the same way that I do, which is kindergarten children, they're interested in baseball and butterflies. We don't need to be exploring what sexual gender they identify with when they're five years old. Now, I said there was a misstep. The expansion of that legislation through high school I think was a grave mistake. I think as children age, these issues become very, I mean, they become very real. It's part of the passage into adulthood. And to have access to your teacher as a resource to discuss and debate these issues, I think is incredibly important. And I have a huge, huge belief in the importance of freedom of speech. And any legislation that curtails freedom of speech in this context with an adolescent student, I think is a mistake. What about going after Disney? <sighs> you know, what, like from my heart, Ron won that war out of the, out of the gate. He should have spiked the football and walked off the field, and it should have ended there. The ongoing battle with Disney, I think, is pointless. In fact, it doesn't reflect well on the ethos of Florida. You know, the, the mayor of Miami-Dade is, is a Democrat. She's really exceptional. And you know what she talks about with me? How can we make this a great state to do business in? Ron needs to stay on that talking point, and in his words and in his actions, Make it clear to the entire United States of America, Florida is open to companies that want to create jobs, that want to create innovation, that want to build a future in our nation. And the fight with Disney runs counter to that narrative. Absolutely. So do you support him for presidency? So we're, we're now through the first debate. And I'll tell you what. I'm still on the sidelines as to who to support in this election cycle. I'm still on the sidelines. And in fact, it probably doesn't matter. Donald Trump has been made the martyr by the legal system. He's right now the runaway favorite in the Republican primary. And interesting enough, there's no real contender against Joe Biden, who, with all due respect, it's, it's time for him to enjoy retirement. Biden. Biden. I, You've also called Trump a three-time loser. Look, if I had my dream, we'd have a great Republican candidate in the primary who was younger, of a different generation, with a different tone for America, and we'd have a younger person on the Democratic side in the primary who would have his message for our country, and we'd have a debate around ideas and principles and policies to make this a great nation. We're not having that dialogue right now. And that's really concerning to me. So you're not, you're still on the sidelines listening to the debates. What, what, how are you assessing? How are you making that decision? What sort of issues are you listening for? Because it's not really clear what DeSantis's campaign strategy is. I, I, I don't know his strategy. I, I, I'm in the same camp you are. It's not clear to me what voter base he's attending, intending to appeal to. Factually, one of the best first term governors in the history of the United States. Florida, under his leadership, crushed it during the pandemic. They've had just tremendous success. 
the last few months have been different. And sometimes success goes to people's head. Sometimes success means that the, the e ecosystem that you live in changes. People no longer give you good feedback about the pros and cons of your policies. I don't know what happened in the DeSantis administration in Florida. I do know first term governor, been not, just a phenomenal job. But that hasn't been how this last few months has played out. So which one do you worry more about, Trump or Biden? I, you know, who do I worry more about? Sounds like you're not a fan of either. I, both men have had important roles in American government. With Trump, we did beat the pandemic. And to his credit, a number of issues of national security, both defense and economically, he put front and center on the table. In fact, those issues have almost consumed both parties at this point in time in terms of, of debate. But he did a lot of good things as president, but there were some dark, there are, you know, there are dark sides to that moment in American history too. I think it's time for him to move on. With, with Joe Biden, I don't know if the American voter wants to be deciding the president for 2026 and 2027 in the general election. And it may not be Joe Biden given his health. So do you really want to go vote for Joe Biden when you, when you know deep down there's a really damn good chance he won't finish those four years as president? And that's a very unusual place for the American voter to be in making that decision to cast a ballot for somebody.